sequence evaluation show of hands. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the reason I mention that is uh, just to do the kind of overall or summary of, of evaluations is now with it being a process to integrate and even before many people have an evaluation, it's, we always talk about the importance of figuring out what it ever is, the, the purpose that you're trying to get uh, an evaluation for, and then get the appropriate evaluation. So for now, you have a West evaluation for you. So let's say you wanted to go back and you're in accounting, but you wanted to round out your knowledge around IT or environmental sustainability and to do it at a university or college. You should, of course, go to the college and even the program and the, and the division in the, in the university or college to figure out whatever their requirement is and get the evaluation. It might be less, it might not, but just an important note around evaluations. Uh, and this session, in partnership with CPA Ontario, is something that West does a little bit differently than just our credential evaluation work. Uh, West was founded in 1974 in the U.S. Uh, basically, the evaluations were a mechanism to help people that were internationally trained to have success in Canada and the U.S. We opened up uh, our office in Canada in 2000. So the credential evaluation part is kind of our core work, but we really try to expand and do some different things outside of that and under a brand that we've recently adopted called Global Talent Coach. So we do a range of things. This is our first in-person session that we've done uh, in about a year, roughly. It's going to be a tough mark to, to follow, but we're back in this last year. We did a lot of webinars because we have tens of thousands of people that are connecting with us overseas, so different topics. So if you want to follow us on uh, at West Canada, you can hear about all the interesting information, such as this event right here. Uh, so with that, uh, I think you see a blue survey at the end. Uh, at the end, if you fill that out, help us make these events even better going forward. And otherwise, that was it. That's with you. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Very good evening to you. My name is Carmen Jock. I'm the manager of student recruitment with the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario and West, that's the World Education Services, are proud to bring you the Pathways to Success event. Today, we are pleased to bring you an insider's look into the field of accounting to help you better prepare to take the next step on your journey to achieving your professional goals in accounting, finance, business, or just simply advancing your career in this field. So when considering a future in accounting and finance, it is important that you equip yourself with the necessary skills and knowledge to succeed. And the CPA designation is a recognized credential in accounting and financial excellence. <coughs> Throughout this evening, I'd ask you to stay engaged and leverage the tools and resources provided you to enable you to make and take meaningful steps towards your career. <coughs> so we have a program that is designed with internationally educated professionals in mind. We will provide you help during your education process and then follow up with support such as enriched professional development opportunities throughout your career. Eyes are half, half shut today because it was jet lag because I was in China last week. So I'm still waking up. <laughs> so I, what I try to do is I try to do this. Uh, some of you, if you have seen it, just it might be a reputation. I try to compare a career goal with a growing a plant. So that actually speaks, and then I'll try to link it back to why I do this. So. This is what I call the foundation. So if I go, for, when you try to grow a plant, you need a good soil, which has to have nutrients, topsoil, minerals, and feed back. Similarly, that's your basic characteristic that you should have in your side, okay? And, and this is very important when you are in Canada, basically, is your willpower, most important thing, especially for people who are new immigrants, 
very important. You cannot give up hope. <coughs> Self-confidence okay, is very important. Second is patience. You have to be patient. If you are, like for, I, I'll go to my example. Like if the day I came to Canada, the day before that, I was with the Minister of Finance of Uganda. The next day when I arrived in Canada, I realized that I was nobody. <laughs> okay. So, but that, but that did not give up my patience. I had to be patient about that fact. And then your know, integrity. And I'll, I'll talk about the integrity in a minute. The so next is, so after if you have a good soil, okay, then you need water, fertilizer, and seed, basically, to do that. I try to compare this with your education, your additional skills, personality, and communication. In Canada, one of the most important thing is, is this one, is communication. That's your development. And some of us struggle with it when we come from a bit far east. <laughs> I think we, because we try to send, but I think we, it, it's worthwhile to spend some time to develop your communication skills. Because it's one thing here is, even the exam that you write, the case study or something, is a bit different from the way we have written exams, and, and it is very important, the communication. Then, if you have developed and then the growth, what I try to say is this the growth is the sunshine is to a plant, networking is to your growth. And I'm, I'm just skipping to this quickly because I just want to give you an idea and then try to link it with my profile. And then, Finally, your career will bloom. Like the flowers will grow, your career will grow. So what are the three most important factors? Is your education, the network, and additional skills, which is especially the communication skills. But when you come to the point of this, we cannot just stop here. Like once you have achieved your CPA or you have a good job, you cannot stop there. You need to grow, otherwise, basically, <laughs> this is what happens. And, and, and this is very, very important here, actually, that, that uh, like, for s seven days I was away and two of my plants died because it, there was no way to give water. So this is where I think once you finish your CPA, that's not the end, basically. You have to continue going to your professional development, IFRS, and whatever is up to date because those are your differentiating factors. So that finally de determines on success and failure. So now, see, what I do is, now I try to talk about Krish, okay, and try to link it to what I just said. So, my foundation, okay, so my foundation is, I'm very calm and fearless. I go nobody where nobody went. One big example is, is when I finished my CA in India, my first job was was as a to prepare the budget of a very small country called Seychelles. Which now everybody knows, most of the people know about it because of uh, uh, because of a lot, lot of people who go there now to celebrate the honeymoon and all. But when I went there, it was seventy thousand. Only a small country, but didn't feel like a small country. I was working in the Ministry of Finance preparing budget. So basically, an accountant, professionally trained accountant, doing a job of an economist. And many people predicted that was a doom of my theory. Because, like, if I am trained as an economist, how the hell am I going to come back to do income tax? Okay. But it was a great experience for me, and, and, and I was basically fearless to accept that challenge. And I never basically fear in jumping and do whatever I feel like doing. And another most important thing is creativity. When I say creativity is, I'll give you the great example of my first job in, 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 in Canada. And we'll talk about it a bit more. When I arrived, as I said, that I went to the, the free institute at those days, the C, CA, CGA, and and CMA. And some of the other, it's not to discriminate anything, but the CGA at that time was the program suited my life. Actually. 
So, so I, I took that, I enrolled that. And, and if you buy those who have not enrolled in the CPA right now, you will see a marked difference. And it is not only me, but in the last 18 years, I've met so many people across, and, or so many people I've interviewed, okay? They, they all have acknowledged one thing, that there's a huge difference in the response that you get when you send your resume blindly, okay, without that designation. And when you write that in your, that, that you are an enrolled CPA student or whatever, because then people are able to relate your education, your experience with what the level of this country is. And you, we cannot change it. Like a lot of people want to change it, they want to be daring. I'm not that daring. I'm fearless, but not to that extent. Uh, so, this thing I creativity is that there will be a moment in your life when you, so in my first job, there was a moment one day when they were trying to do something in Excel. And, and I just heard them doing it. So I came back home, I told my wife that this is our make or break situation in Canada. I designed that whole thing that they were discussing. It was about a billing in a company. I was on a one-month contract, and uh, and I designed it over the night. Overnight, I was awake the whole night, and I took it back and and gave it to the, my boss, and she was amazed. And that actually was my making or breaking point in Canada because that made me permanent, and the boss started ruling. And once you become permanent, you know what the advantage is? The biggest advantage is those fees that you saw on the right side is actually paid by the employer. <laughs> So, so that's your should be your target, okay? That, that, and I think nowadays even the contract agencies they try to subsidize that little bit. In my time, they did not do that. I'm very passionate. Whatever I do, it doesn't matter whether I'm here to talk or whatever. I, even if I'm driving, I'm very passionate about it. I drive almost every day, 70 kilometers each way, so 140 kilometers. But I, I do it very passionately. Because it is the most important two hours of my life when I'm thinking a lot, okay? And trying to solve problems. And obviously I'm very professional. This is one thing I noticed when I interview people. When you go to an interview or come present yourself in a very professional manner, that's very important. And then I keep on learning and then I'll just show you in a minute what I do. So this is my development and maintenance. So my development is I'm a, like uh, like those of you who are from India will know that CMA India is actually the former cost and cost accountant. So then I that is actually true because in our time you could do your BCom before your CM. So I actually finished my professional degree before I actually had a university degree. Then I went on to do my CA. And then actually when I came here. I, I said that I did my CV, and I did not actually stop there because I thought that, like, like uh, the choice are very simple. Either you want to be an audit or you want to be in the industry. I wanted to be in the industry. I love to be in the industry, so I, that's why I did my MBA. And and again, if you are the bar lecture that you see, I put that 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 implies not only you know growth in your career, but the growth in your bank account. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, that, that's very important, actually. That, and my MBA, actually, because of when you get your break, be passionate about what you do, because that my MBA was entirely sponsored by my company. So, then my, so this is my career growth chart. So I used to, in India, I used to work with Deloitte. And because I was already a grad, a professional when I went to do my CA, I actually got an opportunity to be in the consulting division and actually I, I worked in, in, in various consulting engagement. From there on I moved on to Seychelles actually and I spent about, uh, from Seychelles, when I got my break, I, I did something unique in Seychelles actually. It was unique was about the public debt management. And, and actually that made me very passionate about public debt and I'm still very passionate about public debt. Because I reconciled the debt of Uganda, of, sorry, of Seychelles and 
which actually opened a new door and avenue and career for me. I somehow on the other, uh, the World Bank actually thought that I'm a very specialized reconciler of public data. So when they had an, in Uganda, there was a scenario where the Western countries wanted to help Uganda to repay their debt. A similar scenario is going to happen in Greece seven days from today. On June 5th, Greece may not be able to pay their IMF debt. So it was a similar scenario in Uganda where Uganda was in a scenario where Uganda may not have been able to pay that. And I did not know this till I go there, that one, there is a huge, huge thing that goes on if you are not able to pay your World Bank and IMF debt. It automatically they stop their disbursement. All the projects that are going on, they all come to a stop. It's a, just a huge impact on the GDP. So they, I got some. So I got selected to do the the reconciliation of the World Bank Uganda debt, and that basically because of uh, during the EMS time in Uganda, everything got destroyed. So basically, I had nothing to reconcile because there was nothing. Okay. So basically, the whole thing one had to be built up from the beginning. And at that point, uh, in you have to stay in Uganda. I decide, uh, we decided to move to Canada. That was decided in a sense that I did not know anybody in Canada. I never came to Canada before in my life. But it was just a decision we made. And at that point, I when I told all my people that I want to go, actually because my of my work in Uganda. They wanted me to go to Tanzania, but I, I told them that basically I made a decision to move to Canada. So I think if you have heard me speak before, this is what I call as a Bollywood star getting a Hollywood movie. <laughs> so, so six months assignment, I just put a price which is way beyond my money. I did a calculation that this will help me to settle in Canada. They agreed to it, and my job was basically to help them to design something which they can implement later to reconcile the work in Tanzania. Then I came to MDS. I started on a one-month contract and, and I stayed in MDS for eight years, which and grew, we grew a company from a loss of six million dollars every year to a profit of 12 million over a period of five years. But from a one location, tiny location, Mississauga to a global location of six locations. And I was the global director of finance at that time. Then actually I moved on to Corellian to get, uh, to, in, to get a different industry experience, that is construction and PPP. It actually suits my passion and my career well because PPP is all about debt. You are borrowing money to finance projects. And uh, so it fits with my passion very well. And that's what I do in most of today. Uh, so basically again, this, as I said, this is, this is a, something which I provide to my career. Uh, next thing is, I'll just talk about what I did as a new immigrant, and which I told in the beginning. Forget who you are, okay? I went go with Carmen to Metro Convention Center, and many people come and tell me, I was, I'm the CFO of such and such company. Just forget about it. Okay? <laughs> That doesn't really matter because, and there is, and, and I'll tell you, after 18 years in Canada, working in the industry for 18 years, there is a distinct difference between how we work and how there. You have to learn the culture here to become successful. Okay, so I, I don't. Okay. So next is look at the mirror and own your weakness. Okay? So for me, I try to tell people one thing is like my weakness when I came to Canada was the biggest problem I faced was. I would not leave a message in the voicemail. I was not used to it because we like in, like I've never been exposed to voicemail. So, but one thing is, if you that is the biggest weakness that I had because how many times you call a recruiter and a recruiter picks up the phone? The answer is very simple, zero. So you have to leave a message. So basically, I, that's the thing I realized was my biggest weakness in my job search. And the next thing is, truth, nothing but the truth on your resume. Please do not try to say I like that. I have used QuickBook in Bank of Pakistan. Okay, that is too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so 
This is, I even do it today, attend interview as much as you can. This is the best practice. Like even if you want to, like people tell you about, I will tell you also about network strategy. Like, yeah, you can go, but ask people to interview you. That's the biggest practice. I, I, I recently I went, like I go there every time I call a headhunter, call people. Even I know that I won't take up the job, but I go there because that's a good practice. Because you get in, exposed to different scenarios, so actually when time comes, you actually know what to do. Next is, is what I is very important is what I said before is that you have to register for a designation because that helps you to understand people that are involved. And people who are looking for your first break, okay. I think this is my sincere advice to you. Please look for a contract market first, then before you look for a full time. If you get a full time job, I will say that next day go and buy a local max, the stars are in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't have to work. But, but usually the thing is that, that try the contract market, I it's a huge market, yeah. and, uh, and then please help each other. So, the next is networking, I just want to say that a few things is the elevator pitch. You should have a two minute pitch ready for you when you meet to tell about you for two minutes. The next thing is build a relationship first before you ask the person to give you a job, because I don't know any one of you. So you have to invest and understand your relationship. Then in LinkedIn profile is very important. And I say the LinkedIn picture is very important. It cannot be like this. It cannot be like this. It cannot be like this. This is what it has to be. And so that is a summary of my thing. And if you have question at the end or whatever, I'll be wrong and we can talk. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chris. This is actually you made uh, my, my, my day very easy because I'm going to use your presentation. After the presentation right? um, there are some similarities because I arrived last night at uh, 7 o'clock, so a bit of a jet lag. Uh, but I didn't want to miss this opportunity because it's something that I, I really uh, value a lot and passionate about. So, um, instead of boring you with my uh, Know, stories. Part of the story is a struggle, and part is success. But the outcome is success uh, from my childhood. Don't worry about it. Um, let me give you a brief of uh, my journey uh, in my, my career. So I left India in 1982 after my graduation. Uh, I worked there for a year in, in teaching capacity as an assistant professor of pharmacy. Uh, those days it was not very challenging. So I thought, let me go for something very challenging. So I got an opportunity to leave the country and go to Middle East. Oh, wow, that's very nice. Nice building, clean roads, everything is very nice. It's very challenging. But again, um, there was a challenge uh, to start my career over there. But stayed there for nine years, um, working as chief accountant in one of the companies. In the last four years, um, as uh, a senior auditor with Deloitte. So there's still some, some similarities for us. So I don't know what happened. All of a sudden I said, you know what, let me move over to other place because uh, life started getting bored over there. And uh, it was a bit of a challenge to convince my wife by then because I lived there. At that time I got married, I said, one day I'm going to get married. And I said, you know, why don't we try to go somewhere else? Uh, you know, I want to pursue my education, that's one of the reasons why I decided to leave. So um, I decided to come to Canada uh, with all the hopes and uh, full enthusiasm. Uh, Enjoying the weather of uh, uh, plus 40 over there in the Middle East for about nine years. Never thought I'm going to be uh, arriving here on March, sorry, February 28th to minus 35. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was the first shock of my life. And that too, I landed in Montreal, not knowing a single word in French. And the guy was calling me Bonjour. I thought probably he's calling my name. I didn't change my name. I didn't see calling me Bonjour. I don't know. But anyway, uh, quickly uh, learned enough that that was not the place for me because the challenge is the language is a challenge and the weather was a challenge. And the weather challenge I can always face it because it's not a real challenge, you know, and uh, you get used to that, you'll come out of that, but the language is a challenge. So uh, survived a couple of uh, months over there, realized that, oh my God, uh, it's going to be a, a difficult challenge than anything else that I ever felt. So moved to Toronto, again, came to Toronto. 
25 years ago. Totally different world. No friends, no network, no computer, nothing was there, right? So those days I started writing resumes by hand. And you know how to write a resume by hand. Right? You spend three hours to write a resume, and the last page you make a mistake. <laughs> and what are you going to do? You start all over again. Right? So this is how I started, right? But I got an experience over there. The challenge was that my experience was not recognized. My experience was recognized to some extent. My education was not recognized. So it was really a struggle to find a job. Because all the dream that I had before I came to Canada, it just vanished, just disappeared. I said, what I did in my life? So I tried to convince my wife, can we really go back? I said, you know what, are you fooling yourself? I told you not to come. You made a mistake. Now, this is it, you're going to stay put. So that was my first decision that I made. I always say that in my mentoring program, I always say that, say that what is the one objective for you people to come to Canada? What was that one objective? Right? So that's very important. So anyway, um, started going all over the place. I wanted to start from where I left off uh, as an auditor. I said, it's not going to happen. And I don't want to fool myself, right? I need to bring the food on the table, otherwise my wife will be saying that, what's going on? So I decided to look for an entry level position. Now the challenge is that overqualified, underqualified, no Canadian experience, all those things. You all probably some of you have experienced the same thing. But again, you need to have an entry level position in order to start. Because how do I going to how, how, how am I going to prove myself that I'm worthy of working for you or to produce unless I get an opportunity, right? So no Canadian experience, no job. No job, no Canadian experience. You go into the cycle. Right? You don't have any experience because I don't have a job. Give me a job, but you don't have any experience. <laughs> so this is a struggle going back and forth. But one thing I realized at that point was that I have to get my designation recognized or my education recognized because they are experiencing, they are recognizing my experience to some extent, but not my qualification. Right? So. Anyway, um, I applied to many jobs. I got a couple of uh, entry level jobs. I realized at that point that I have to register myself into the content designation box. Right? So, as uh, Chris said, uh, CTA, CPA, CMA. So, again, always a struggle. Which one is good? CPA, CMA, CA. I have gone through enough. I need a designation, which is a quick one. So, the C CGA was somewhat you know, similar to uh, my life type of business. I said, okay, I'm going to enroll to CPA. Sorry, uh, CPA. This is where the, the, I got the break. So I applied to many, many jobs and never, never got any response. But I got my first breakthrough from a company where I never applied. You know why? That was City of Toronto. It was 24 years ago. It was called Metropolitan Toronto because seven municipalities were amalgamated in 1998. And before that, it was seven smaller municipalities. Right? So, Metro Toronto had the policy of hiring auditors only from accounting bodies. So they went to CTA looking for an, an auditor to work in the audit department. And I, as a student of CTA, you know, submitted my resume into their database. And somehow, I got a call from Metro Toronto or then to Metro Toronto. And at that time, I was extremely frustrated. Extremely frustrated because I'm not getting a job. So one fine morning, I got a call from the audit manager saying that, Mr. Ali, do you want to come and uh, meet with me? I said, I wasn't sure whether this is a, you know, a joke <laughs> <laughs> or I'm dreaming, whatever. But anyway, I said, you know what? Um, I was at a very frustrating stage. I said, if I don't have a Canadian experience with that, OK? She said, fine. I don't have an accounting designation. Is that OK? She said, fine. She said, I, I couldn't believe myself. Honestly, I couldn't believe myself. Something is happening. Probably I should have bought me 649 by then. So I came here, and the manager did not ask a single question about my um, experience. She said, if you are working, if you are going to work with the Deloitte for the four years, um, then I believe in you. But can you join? Uh, or when can you join? And I was just really losing myself. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, it was true, and it's a great story. Uh, I say we are joint, and um, um, my manager then felt after three months that I was the poor person. And she was the one recommending me to other senior positions in the same market. The same manager who hired me for a temporary, it was a temporary position hired me. And she was the one who was really uh, recommending me to take a senior position. So the accounting designation at that time that I registered was the one that really gave me the first. And, and my manager at that point, and she's, uh, she's a very good um, was literally giving me the push to complete my designation. Right? Let me tell you that the difficulties of working and studying it is not that easy. And most of you are going through an experience. Right? I have to work Monday to Friday. Right? And I have no time to go through my uh, course materials. Absolutely. So my study time is Friday night at 7 o'clock, go home, a bag full of books, a flask full of tea, and a small alarm clock, and a towel, goes to go to uh, uh, York University, a uh, quiet study room, or University of Mississauga, uh, to University of Brown Mississauga campus, a study room, right? And I have to complete all, I read all my materials, and prepare my assignments, and submit my assignment 12 midnight Saturday. And if I miss it, I'm dead. So you can understand the difficulties of going through that. But I have a challenge that I will, and I need, and I must. And I got my decision, right? That gave me the pathway to move up. An opportunity came, I became a supervisor, I became a manager, I became a director. But again, that persistence, right, working, uh, Continuously, methodically, towards achieving the designation really brought me over here. That's the, su the success story is that you know, it brought me where I wanted to be. So when I started, I had some plans, like short-term and long-term plans. The short-term plan was that get into a job. Because as you said, my previous speaker, Chris said, that if, you know, a lot of people come from, from various countries, right? And they say that I was a marketing vice president. So what? So what? Right? And I was the vice 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 President of Finance, good for you. It doesn't make any sense at all. And I sit in panels, I sit in the panels. And I tell you that it doesn't mean anything at all. Because what we're looking at is the competence and the skills that we need to work. And I always tell the people that in this country, one good thing we all have to remember is that there's absolutely no discrimination on people's job. And a class, we don't have a, a class system in the people's job. Right? A general manager and the person who is or, 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 or a clerical position, when they go out, they normally get along very well. There's absolutely no difference between them. Right? So it doesn't matter. If I go and tell them that I'm a vice president, you know what, good for you. Keep it up. It doesn't make any sense at all. Right? So those things are very, very important for us to, to move forward. But the coding designation is the one that we have brought in. And even in my, um, so when I was moving on, my passion really went into not-for-profit PDC, and then see where I can expand, expand my networking and contribution value. That's why I got pulled into focusing on uh, volunteering non-for-profit I started in 1991, and it's the second year of my arrival, uh, I started volunteering. And that literally opened up an enormous amount of opportunities for my friends and the professionals that I volunteer as a board uh, member uh, and as a founding uh, member of two organizations and I'm really doing very well and uh, still volunteering in various capacities. And, and I got into the uh, mentoring program in uh, 2004 on those the first the mentoring program started. And, and, and really um, wanted to help because a lot of people um, really struggling to find out exactly where to start because I came here, I started I don't know what to go, what to do, what to do, who to talk. And the guidance, right? Is it taking an accounting designation is good or something else is good? And right now, in my, and I'm, I'm, thank God, I'm really happy 
that all the accounting three uh, uh, designations are now unified, okay, and one CPA. And there was a bit of a, a bias between a CTA and a CMA and a CA. And let me tell you that until the unification uh, was uh, uh, taken place, a hiring manager of a CPA, let me tell you that he was always looking for a hiring manager uh, or a, a CTA. A CMA hiring manager would be looking for a CMA and goes with the CA. Right? Thank God, thank God. And that's not going to be there anymore because of the CTA. It's very, very good. Right. And again, let me tell you one more thing. I guess I know that the time is essentially over here. That an accounting designation is an important screening criteria for any accounting and finance related jobs. And when I started here, in my capacity as a director, uh, almost 10 years ago, um, I was managing a small pool of uh, accountants. And we had near about, uh, we still have. 45 uh, staff that uh, are working under my, in my unit. 30 of 35 of them are accounting related, right? When I started, I had only two qualified accountants. Today, I have 28 qualified accountants working in the mission. And City of Toronto, as you know, is a bigger organization. It's a $14 billion opportunity. Huge organization. It's a very complex uh, budgeting system that we have. Right? We or the city are looking <coughs> for talented accounting professionals. Right? And, and if you look at, even if you go today, if you look at the job posts, the external job posting of City of Toronto, there are six accounting related jobs are posted. Take a look at it. And when you come to the qualification side, every, the first or the second line is an accounting designation. Right? Let me tell you, and this is the secret. When we put out a job call, we get hundreds of resumes. Right? And the first three or four qualification criteria are the screening criteria. Right? And the first one is accounting designation. Either completed or working towards. Right? And you can have, I can have any accounting designation with all due respect from the country that I come from. but unless and until I have something that I have it here or what to us, that opens up a door for getting into the interview process. So which is very, very, very important. And again, as, as, as in, in the previous presentation, and, and also um, uh, the Alistair said, that the technical side is one component. And when I'm sitting in an interview, I will be a fool to test you again on the technical side because that's what the accounting bodies are doing. What are we doing again? I don't have to retest, which is already been tested three years. I look at soft skills, which is very, very, very important. And that exposure gets in from the accounting, uh, you know, this portion that we do. So um, you are in the right place. And those who are planning to move ahead and registering and becoming a CPA, do it. And this will definitely take you closer to the job market and it will definitely open up the door. Right? So, all the very best. Hope I didn't bore you. And uh, um, good luck. And if there's any question, I can hang around and, and you can ask me after this.
it's the best thing I've ever done in my life, was to learn about marketing and advertising. Because I think what has brought me to where I am in my professional life, which is pretty much the life that I've had in Canada the past 15 years I've been here, has been my marketing skills. And the product that I have put to market from the beginning is myself. And that's what I do. I market, I sell myself, and I help others to sell themselves as well. Excellent. Anyone? Jasmine Scholler, would you all want to take, take on one of the, some of the skills and competencies that got you to where you are right now? At Deloitte, maybe. <laughs> well, thank you. One of the key things that I think is very important for, for us as a new and it's, it's been mentioned by, by the speakers, and it's more in communication. Um, where we come from, or where I come from, it's difficult when I'm talking to people to look at their face. But if I'm interviewing you here, I love to be able to see your disposition. I love to see those soft skills that you have. I think that's a, that has worked for me, understanding the fact that when I meet people, I need to be able to communicate with them. I need to be able to, they need to be able to see that psychology that, oh yeah, I'm interested. Those soft skills are there. Don't forget everyone has the technical skills, but that soft skill is what I'm interested in. And I can only see that by your disposition when we do communicate. And that's very important. I think it has helped me here. Yeah, another thing is that, um, in terms of um, skills, I think it's important just to pick up new skills. Given the opportunity, um, I had uh, my first job was actually in an insurance uh, company uh, as their financial systems person. And I ended up uh, um, getting to understand the accounting side of insurance for the first time. And the funny thing now is I'm back with an insurance company again and working with one of the people I worked with 25 years ago. And, uh, and then when I transitioned from insurance, I went to the National Trust, where I ended up picking up uh, Cognos and Friendship and learning Oracle. Uh, but it's really um, getting passionate about the thing that you're working on. So really getting involved in um, learning as much as you can. I've mentored a number of students where um, really they've had the opportunities to pick up new skills and therefore been able to progress themselves um, and get onto better opportunities. Lennox, would you want to share any insights on it? Yeah, sure. I, I think, um, and touched on it earlier on, uh, the whole issue of uh, mentoring and finding somebody who, if you want to be successful, then you find somebody who is successful and learn as much as you can from them. Just be a sponge um, as much as you can. Just, just um, And they're out there. Um, just Absolutely. find somebody who's been successful, find somebody who have gone through the ups and downs and have worked their way through it, and learn as much as you can from them. I think that, that, that is very, very important uh, that you identify somebody. The other part of it is also being a professional. Being a professional in Jamaica is different from being a professional in Venezuela, and, or being a professional in the UK, or in Costa Rica, or Panama, or the United States, or Canada. And I've worked in all those countries, that's what I'm saying that. So, um, so uh, being a professional in each country is different. So you learn what becomes a professional in, your, in the country that you're in, and conduct yourself accordingly. The, uh, because when you go to interviews or um, if you're in sales or, or you're just going to casual meetings, people see you before they hear you. Okay, you can remember that. And I think the last research I did, I think over 90% of communication is nonverbal. You probably took the picture. <laughs> but a, quite a high percentage of, of your communication is nonverbal. So you've got to learn all of those skills in the country that you're in. And nonverbal in, in in Europe is different from nonverbal in Latin America and the Caribbean, and certainly in the US and Canada. So you've got to learn the culture of where you are. And as somebody had mentioned it, I think Pete Ballard mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay? Excellent. So, how important is the CPA designation to get a job in accounting finance? Just getting your foot in the door. And, if, but all, you know, I think, uh, Paula, you could share your insights from the recruiter's perspective, right? But I think, and it's been mentioned here to a lot of people, that's been pretty much the what opens the door. And, and if we think of it the way I see it, it's just human nature when we look at things that are known to us and what is not known. So I, I, I always like to put an example out there. So let's say you're going to the supermarket and you're going to buy, I don't know, a box of cookies. Or if you have children, you're going to buy baby food. That, that's a better example because I mean, normally when it's your company, you're, it's your baby, right? So let's say you're going to buy baby food and you find two boxes and one box says baby food. And the other box says, Gerber or Gerber, baby food, nutritional content, ingredients, all the just everything that you, you need to know to, to feel safe 
what do you do? You buy the brand that you that you know, and with all the information that you know, will make you comfortable and will make you safe. That's what a CPA designation will do for you, right? Because it will make the employer feel comfortable, feel safe, because it's what they know. It's 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 the natural fear of the unknown. What's happening? So it's not discrimination. It's not that you're not from Canada. It's not, it's just if I don't know. I'm fearful. And if there's someone else next to you with probably the same technical skills, experience, knowledge, and everything, but has that, that, prob that person is probably going to win over the, the job, right? So I think it's just, I mean, it's that seal of confidence, approval that, that people and employers are always looking for that will help in that process. Excellent. Sure. Would you like to go next? Yeah, actually, I started with you. Uh, <laughs> I currently work for Deloitte, and I'm a CPA, and CPA actually was brought me into Deloitte. Well, I'd spent a couple of years back home with KPMG, but Deloitte was looking for an individual that has both the business and the technical know-how. Now, you find out I've been in financial systems for a while, and what's very important is the bridge between the technical side, between IT and finance, and they're looking for someone. And actually, my link was more or less from LinkedIn. The partner got that information, called me up, said, oh, you know what, we need to have a dinner. And that was it. It was at a dinner that we spoke, and it was at that dinner that I said, you know what, I'm interested. The following morning, they're going to be getting in touch with you, and that's the way it is. So CPA, now the fact that I have CMA, CPA, in front of my designation, or in front of my name, that designation is actually what break the eyes in front of that partner to call me and to, I mean, say, okay, you know what, let's meet, and that's it. So CPA definitely is a plus, or I mean, it's a plus for you, when you are getting into, and I mean, that can be overemphasized. The speakers have all mentioned it. It's very important. I mean, as you think about it, it's something, it's the value that is added to the product, and you just need it. You need to add it for you to be able to separate yourself from the others. Um, so, um, similar to show, I've got uh, financial systems experience, but I picked it up in the UK, so I started off my designation in the UK, but I ended up uh, emigrating before I finished which was a bit of a challenge because of this university thing. And they didn't accept the fact that I've done the at the uh, professional organization. But it allowed me to do organizational behavior four times. But, <laughs> um, but uh, um, one of the things was that um, having gone through, and put, I had the, the fact that um, when I came, I had that time to actually put in my request to be evaluated. So I had that under evaluation on my resume and um, um, ended up um, um, moving from National Trust to CIBC because National was bought by Scotia. And um, at the time I was doing my MBA and I was doing a, um, a project about downsizing the National Trust, anyone's got a job for me. And uh, the uh, prof was actually a VP from CIBC and said, well, we need an accountant to look after our technologists. So I ended up transitioning from the technology side across to the business side. And because of the fact I was in the process of getting my uh, CMA at the time, um, I ended up, uh, and the, the requirement for the job was a CMA was required, an MBA was required, but because I was in the process of getting my MBA, in the process of getting my CPA, I basically got the job because I could uh, work, work well with the person who needs to be yeah, I think um, for the, for the uh, folks who are considering the uh, designation in Canada, right, I would treat the CPA as a almost like a business case. There goes my strategy, a no. business no. element. It's almost like a business case. So you've got to treat the CPA as an investment. It's really an investment, an investment in you that's going to pay off big time. And every investment, as you know, the uh, you've got to look at the return on your investment. Okay. <coughs> And if you look, I think somebody mentioned it about earnings potential here. If you look at the earning potential in, in, in Canada, people without designation and people with this designation, you just have to calculate that differential income. Many of you know what I'm talking about. The differential income. And you take that differential income and you divide it into the investment of your, and the investment comes in three forms, your time, your mind, and your money. And you look at that return differential income that you would make five years or however long it takes you because you're going to be in this profession for the rest of your life. No, if you're going to be in accounting profession for that, why not get into this nation? And you know, it makes sense. 
right? So invest the time, the mind, and the money to get it done because you will make huge return on that investment and some, much more. And it will pay off big time. And the other thing about that investment is that you've got to look at um, what CPA has done for me. And I came by the CMA route. Um, it gave me three things. I call it the three R's. Um, one, the respect of the new country, the recognition, and more importantly, the reward. Those are the three R's that a CPA designation will give you bar none. So don't hesitate. So I just wanted to add one more thing. Uh, so one of the things with the CPA uh, actually being enrolled is that it gives you a great thing which Chris mentioned, which is the opportunity to network. So one of those, um, it's, a, it's an additional avenue where you can network with people in the profession where you want to work in. So I think that's important. So very quickly, what is one piece of advice you wish you, you would have heard earlier in your career? And maybe I'll start with one next first. I think, that, I mean, without, without, without hesitation, I know what it is. And that is the one piece of advice is um, uh, how important networking is uh, when you're developing your career. Um, and it goes hand in hand with also getting your qualification and designated. The two things go hand in hand. Um, getting designated and, and in the same process, um, networking. And, and there's an art to it, and there is a technique to it, and uh, there's value in it you got to learn it and, and make mistakes. And, 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 and there's no such thing as, as failure when you're developing your career. No such thing as failure. You only discover what doesn't work. Excellent. Hello? Well, I, I think it's, it's closely aligned, but to me, uh, something that I learned later on my career here in Canada was the value of volunteering. Uh, so I, I got into volunteering just because I felt I was in a place where I could help wanted to support others, not knowing the huge return that would have on my professional and personal life. So, I mean, essentially, I, I, I came in and I said, okay, yeah, I, I think I can help, I want to help, and then suddenly, actually, my current job came out of my volunteering uh, experience because it was all the power of networking and connecting people, and people suddenly start looking at you differently as well, and, and, and the attention that is drawn towards you because of that volunteering role that you're doing. Uh, to me, it was an eye-opener. No one ever told me about that, and, and I, I'd love to share that because I honestly feel, yes, I have put in a lot of time and effort into volunteering, but the returns have been a lot bigger. It's all about giving back, right? Yes, absolutely. Sholo? I think reaching out. Uh, and I, I want to say it's more or less uh, in line with what uh, the other speakers have said. Um, Utilize the technology that we have today. LinkedIn is a very good tool. And earlier on, technology is what we more or less shy away from, but you see it has come to stay, and it's what is used in the world today. So get yourself there, but you need to be smart the way you use it. That's very important. Reach out through LinkedIn. Let, I mean, make yourself known, but be sure that you are professional in everything that you do. Anything on the web today, it's more or less public information. So you need to be sure that you're smart in it and you use it very wisely to your advantage. I think there is tremendous advantage. I mean, make yourself known and you will definitely reap the benefits. Thank you. So Carmen, just in terms of another point which is always good to do is that um, it's great to um, just get engaged in, in the group that you're with, but um, you may have historical information or ideas which may give a different perspective but don't argue with a point um, and work with the people that you're with. So there is a lot of um, uh, issues with challenging the status quo, but in some cases, they've got historical background as to why they do things, and it's really until you've, given, you've proven yourself, you're able to actually sort of show uh, your perspective, and sometimes people are getting into more the idea of, of the ability of the group being better than the individual person. But in, in, what I'm trying to say is that don't be too hung up about your own view. Just be willing to give way to other people's and, and uh, initially as you get your foot in the door. So one of my last questions to all the panelists would be, uh, to our audience, share, I mean, most of them are newcomer professionals, right? What is one key advice or a takeaway or a tip that you'd like to share with them? 
uh, to ensure that they can, you know, get the relevant uh, position in the accounting, finance, business uh, field from your own personal experience, and it's really worked well. So, can I rephrase that question, or is it better? Okay? It's okay. Yeah. So, share any advice to newcomers who are seeking jobs right now within the accounting field based on your very personal experience, right? Something that's worked well for you. I think one of the, if I can go first, yeah, um, sure. I think one of the first things, uh, and I see it in uh, the younger CPAs, CMAs that I interview now and hire uh, and so on, uh, is under doing your research to understand what what you're passionate about. It might be a particular company, it might be a particular industry, it might be a particular functional area, but that passion has to come out in the interview because when you get interviewed, the techni your technical capability is already spoken for. You probably have gone through some um, screening over the phone or from your resume. So by the time you get to the interview, you pass most of the tech, and certainly at a certain level anyway, uh, the technical um, parts of it. One of the things you have to understand is that when employers hire a pers person, they're looking for somebody who's going to relieve their pain. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they're looking for this person, because if I don't hire, if I didn't need to hire, I wouldn't have an interview, right? There's a reason why I'm hiring. So you have to find out what is the reason why the person is hiring. Find out what is the pain of the hiring manager or that company. What are the, and it's typically three boxes, three key issues that the manager is grappling with. The sooner you find out what those three things are, is the, is the time you'll be able to sell yourself. And when you leave that interview, the manager must say, yes, this person is going to help me relieve my pain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what, this evening has all been just music to my ears because everything that everyone has said, especially I mean, the, the keynote speakers and here my fellow panelists, have been all towards the one thing that I'm pushing for the most, especially with international educated professionals, and that's uh, the concept of personal branding. How to brand yourself. So the, key, the, the first element in marketing strategy. The first thing is to understand yourself really well because if you're going to sell a product, you're going to market something out there, you need to know what it is that you're selling. So if you don't know what you're selling, it's really hard to, to convey that message, right? So A, understand yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Um, what are your passions and interests? What are you good at? Because sometimes our passions and interests are not really what we are good at. So make sure that, that you're good at what you're passionate about and what you're interested in. And also, where is the need in the market? So I think it goes back to you. So if you combine those three things, your passions and interests, uh, what you're really good at, and where there is a need in the labor market or in, in the company for that, you've got a winning formula. You've got a winning solution. So actually, just this morning, I, I was invited to present uh, a webinar with Triac that I would strongly encourage you all to listen to, and I know it's going to be recorded on their website, and I strongly recommend that you listen to it because it's all about this, how to sell yourself, what is the strategy, what are the key components of a personal brand, and we're talking about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of your platforms, so you, there has to be clarity, there has to be consistency, and you have to be constant in presenting your brand, and it all has to go tied in together. So there, you, have, you present them differently with your elevator pitch, with your social media presence, through your resume, in interviews, um, it is a different type of message in the way you say it, but ultimately it has to be consistent, clear, and really honest. It has to portray and you have to demonstrate that you have the skills that you're saying that you have. So I think that's, I mean, that's the key to, to having it all hooked up together. So the speakers have said it all. Forget who you were and try to brand yourself. Try to look at who am I? What are my strengths? And make sure you network with people. See, it's, it's very important that we network. It's very important that we speak with people. It's, be, it's also very important that we look for mentors who can guide us, especially to get adapted to the culture. So as someone that is just coming, leave where you're coming from, forget who you were, but look at how you can make yourself relevant here. And you can only do that by meeting with people, mixing with them, and also volunteering. That will be, I mean, the key message you guys. So I think there was a, a great article on, on LinkedIn this morning, um, and it was about um, um, the art of networking. And there was an individual who had gone through 200 coffee meetings to get a fabulous job in finance. And he didn't have the background in finance, but 
in that process of coffee meetings where you basically reach out and say, I want to find out what you do. And um, you then, um, at the end of it, not ask them for a job, but say, give me three more people that I can talk to that will give me more understanding of finance. And he then used those three people, and in that process, every time he met with them, he would say, I'm going to buy you a coffee. And out of the two, he bought one coffee. <laughs> um, they realized that he was he was sort of he was sort of uh, a starving student and uh, so on. So build that out. I think one of the things is that the article I wasn't too happy with was the fact that he suggested don't apply online. I think you've got to use all avenues. So you still got to um, send those resumes in. One of the things I did was I uh, when I came I sent out 300 resumes and I ended up faxing two resumes. The two resumes I faxed got 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 responses and I got interviews the next day. The 200 I sent back, sent out, or 300 I sent out, I got half of them back because I didn't get the white postage. So that's the Canadian experience <laughs> element. <laughs> the, um, the other thing I would say is that um, um, by volunteering you get involved in things. And one of the things that people say is you don't have Canadian experience. I would argue that if you've been here more than six months or in that time frame, you've got Canadian experience. You've been into Tim Hortons, you've dealt with customer service, you've dealt with your local um, co-op, you've dealt with um, people in your community. So you've got community experience and Canadian experience. You've got to showcase that as, as part of um, your resume to say, these are the things I've been doing. I've been volunteering, I've, um, I've registered for the designation, I've done these additional courses. What we have or we don't have, it's how we sell it. Mm -hmm. And one last thing, um, as he was talking about, when you go to an interview, you gotta treat that. I think, well, I like, I don't like the word interview, first of all. <laughs> right? I'm like a father, right? An interview is not an interview, right? It's a sales call. The sooner you get that idea out of your head that it's an interview, the better off you're gonna be. You gotta treat, treat you gotta be like a sales person. Treat the interview as a sales call. I'm going on a sales call today. I'm trying to identify what is sales people. They're going to identify a need that a client has. You see, my employee, when I get in the early mornings and I leave my house, he's not my employee. He's my client. Every day. He's my client. I guess I had five years of management consulting experience. So that, but he's my client every day. Even though he's my employee, he's my client. Right? You've got to treat that interview as a sales call. You're going to sell a certain benefit to relieve the pain so, so of, the, of the customer who is your prospective employer. And if you use that perspective and borrow as much perspective from the salespeople as possible, and that's one of the reasons why I hang out with a lot of marketing and salespeople. I don't hang out with a lot of accountants. <laughs> So what um, you learn a lot from other professionals, that's all I'm saying. So one of the things that was mentioned was the fact that you go to as many interviews as possible. One of the things is that an interview isn't to get a job, it's to get the next interview. So you've got to think of that sales call idea, and you're selling yourself, and you're making this your presence known. So. Absolutely. I want to just share a few points. Um, the, the sorry, from the city of Toronto perspective, that um, there's going to be a lot of um, opportunities coming up because according to um, our uh, review, near about 40% of um, the middle to senior management employees will be eligible to retire by this year, going the next year or the year after. So a lot of opportunities coming up. And please look for the job for coming up. And uh, I just want to share one small tip with you that when you apply for a city of Toronto job, Please customize the resume based on what is being asked in this job for the It's very, very, very important, right? And, um, and you don't have to reproduce the job card in your resume, but try to use the words that are used in the job card because the first screening is done by HR, and HR has no understanding of what you're looking for. They're looking for matching words. So that's the first screening process. And one uh, recent experience that I would like to share with you in a YouTube panel that I was sitting, that if there is an expectation from the panel that you are expected to bring two references, please bring two references. Let me tell you a reason why 
And what happened, the recent panel that I was sitting there, that uh, the interview went very well. We got two shortlisted candidates for a manager position. One person in the interview, when we asked them the first thing, you do bring the references, he said, I did not, because I want to take a look at how the job is going to go. If I like the job, then I will give my references. And guess what? Guess what? And he was shortlisted as a two potential candidate. When we were able to make a final decision, he was written to the job team because he failed to meet a basic requirement of bringing two resumes, two references. If he has a problem to bring two references, let alone coming on board and having a right Right, so watch out that, plenty of opportunities coming in. But again, as I said, again, I'm really emphasizing that the accounting designation or working towards accounting designation is one of the key criteria for accounting finance related jobs coming out of this corporation.